In this video, we're going to take a look at moving from a decimal expansion to binary, octal, or hexadecimal. We're going to start with an octal expansion, but before we actually do that, I just want to talk in generalities about how we're going to do any of these expansions from a base 10 number. We are dealing essentially with the division algorithm. And the division algorithm tells us that we can write some value as dq plus r, d the divisor, q the quotient, r the remainder. And that's what we're doing here with an expansion. Now with an octal expansion, obviously I'm looking at eight, and an octal expansion just means that I'm dealing with a mod eight number. And so as we hopefully know, Whenever we're dealing with mod something, we're very interested in the remainders. So I'm going to be very focused on what happens here. Let's take a look at the process. We have 12,543. I'm going to write that as the divisor of eight, because of course we're dealing with octal. And then it's going to be times some number, which is the quotient, plus some remainder. Now I'm just going to use my calculator and say 12,543 divided by 8 and find some number, in this case 1,567, and then find the remainder of 7. Then I'm going to take the quotient, 1,567, and I'm going to repeat the process. 8 times what? Well, 8 times 195 with a remainder of 7 would be equal to 1,567. Then I'm going to take that quotient again, 195, and say 8 times what, in this case 24, what, with what remainder? 3. And then I'm going to take the quotient of 24 and say that's 8 times what? Well, 8 times 3 is 24 with a remainder of 0. And a lot of people want to stop here because they have a remainder of 0, so they think they're done. We are not done until the quotient is 0. So now I'm going to take my quotient of 3 and say that's 8 times 0 with a remainder of 3. Now I'm done because my quotient is 0. Now you might be thinking, well, that was a fun little exercise, but how did that help me find the expansion? Well, here's how. Essentially, there is an implied times 8 to the 0 here. And here, there is an implied 8 to the 1st because we've already dealt with an 8. And here there is an implied 8 second, and 8 to the 3rd, and 8 to the 4th. So as I'm writing my solution, my decimal, or sorry, octal expansion, I'm going to say this is 3, 0, 3, 7, 7, base 8. And again, I started with 3 times 8 to the 4th, plus 0 times 8 to the third. So I could write it out that way, but of course that's not the way we're going to write it. We're going to write it just like this. 30377 base 8. But that's what it means is because of these values here. So now let's look at a hexadecimal expansion. And just as before, we talked about a hexadecimal expansion, and again that is base 16. I've rewritten the letters and their um, associations in the hexadecimal system for you. But we're going to do it just like we did before. So I'm going to write my original value that is in base 10. And I'm just going to start dividing by 16. So when I divide this by 16, I end up with 1,217. And I, in fact, don't have a remainder on this one. Again, just as before, I'm going to take the 1217, and again, I'm going to divide it by 16, but I'm just going to write it as a multiplication problem. So 16 times 76, and this one has a remainder of 1. I'm going to take my 76 and use it again. 76 is 16 times 4, with a remainder of 12. And then I'm going to take my 4, Remember, we keep going until we get to a 0. So 4 is the same as 16 times 0 with a remainder of 4. So just as before, I'm very interested in looking at these values. And again, I'm going to go 
in the upside down order, so 4, 12, 1, 0. Now obviously I'm not going to leave it like that because 12 is represented by C. So writing this, I would write 4, C, 1, 0, base 16. Lastly, let's look at a binary expansion, and of course binary means base 2. And so I'm just going to do it exactly the same way. Whenever you're dealing with base 2, you're probably going to have a lot of multiplication, and so you leave yourself a lot of room, write small, etc. But if I start with 141, I'm going to divide that by 2, and that is 2 times 70 with a remainder of 1. I'm going to take the 70 and use it again. So 70 is 2 times 35, and that one has a remainder of 0. Remember, there's only two choices with binary, 0 or 1. So if you get a remainder greater than that, you've done something wrong. Then I'm going to take my 35. 35 is 2 times 17, which is 34, plus a remainder of 1. I'll take my 17. 17 is the same as 2 times 8, which is 16, with a remainder of 1. I'll take my 8, which is 2 times 4, which is 8, so that gives me a remainder of 0. Using my 4, 4 is 2 times 2 with a remainder of 0. Again, keep going until you get to that 0 as the quotient. So 2 equals 2 times 1 with a remainder of 0. And then I'll use 1 is 2 times 0 with a remainder of 1. So now I'm all done. So here's my values. And again, I'm going to go in the bottom up order. So 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Now keep in mind when we write things in binary, typically we write them in groups of 4. So I would write 1, 0, 0, 0. 1, 1, 0, 1, base 2 would be my final answer. So far, we've focused on from base 10 to other representations, or from other representations to base 10. Now we're going to take a look at what happens when we have to convert between non-base 10 values, so between binary, octal, and hexadecimal expansions.